what y'all wondering at my I got my sign up. Be happy or leave me alone. <laughs> so I've got it for a minute over here on another part of the wall and I moved it over here. I thought that'd be good for my video, something in the background there. Because all these Christmas lights that don't work. <laughs> about plugging them up the other day and it's like well shit they only half work like half the strands is all that's working so it's like well I guess I ain't doing that so that about like trying a little bit of my tour but yeah this place is too much of a mess it's typical hillbilly land in here like Drives my wife nuts every so often. She gets one of those cleaning spray, but she's got kind of like her side, her sections, <laughs> and I've got mine. So she's running around in circles and moving and cleaning and reorganizing her stuff. But I just got my own little corner area going on. And it's kind of organized. But it's organized chaos. It makes sense to me, but still, it just looks too junky because we don't have like <coughs> the regular chest of drawers and all this kind of stuff in here. But anyway, <sighs> trusty cup. Do I have a trusty cup? don't have to be crazy to work here we will train you <laughs> it's all right nowadays everybody's crazy to a certain point so i don't know why everybody tries so hard to act perfect and stuff it's like it's okay to be yourself. It's all right. People aren't judgy and stuff. Like most people like it. If you be yourself and you just be happy and joke around or whatever, people are drawn to that. People like people who come across as natural and stuff. Usually, that's what I'm hoping with this channel. Is I'm trying to get on here and be myself, and people enjoy it. So, anyway, <clears throat> that's enough ramble for now. I got a story for you guys. I was thinking, what can I start this with? What can I do? What am I going to do? And it's like, okay. <sighs> when my son was born, My wife had this, she, she was cool, had a funny attitude like me, but her one thing that she did that was kind of annoying is she always calling herself fat and stuff. She was like big bone proportioned, I guess you could call it. She wasn't huge or nothing, but she was just a little hefty for a woman, if you want to call it that. She didn't look like it to me. So anyway, she's always calling herself fat. And my son hears this. You know, kids hear stuff and they repeat what they hear. That's what they know, what they learn. So me and my son ran to the store one time and I don't remember what I was getting. I was from I don't know I wasn't pushing a shopping cart. I just had a couple of things in my hands. Like I probably went to grab like some cereal and some milk or something or whatever. So me and my son go in. We get what we want. We come up. We're in line. It's waiting our turn at the register. And this heavy woman walks by and she was... Pretty big. She was probably 200, 250, something. Pretty big woman. 
and I'm just watching my son. I see him he's standing there. You know, he only comes like my knees or a little bug or whatever. He's only a few years old at this point. And I see him just staring. He had this thing where he just stare. Ooh. And I'm like, oh, don't do it. He just keeps staring. Finally, he just points at this woman and looks straight up at me and goes, Dad, why is she fat? Says it loud. So, of course, this woman turns around and gives me this evil eye and just pissed at me like, what are you teaching that boy? That's just rude. You know, I'm going to just hear in my head all the thoughts that's going through her head when he said that. It's like, oh my God. It's like, how do you explain something like that in the middle of a grocery store to a kid who's already been taught by his mom that every woman that's heavy set is fat? So he just asked a legit question why is she fat? It's like, oh my God. <laughs> I say the only thing I can say. I'm just like, well, some people are bigger than others, Patrick. But that's not nice. You don't just holler out somebody's fat. That was rude. That's mean. Don't say that. Now I'm trying to like, I'm just trying to muddle through this little situation the best I can. This woman is just glaring at me, and uh, I can tell she's mad. She just wanted to cuss me out or walk over and slap the crap out of me. But she didn't do it by my son's there. She didn't want to make too big of a scene in front of a child, but I could tell she wanted to. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, muddle through that little mess. I got to the car and I'm like, Patrick, you can't say that. You don't, you don't just blurt fat out in public like that. Like, that's not nice. It's rude. You hurt people's feelings and all that. I'm trying to like explain to them, don't do that, and blah, blah, blah. Because I always talk to them. People were so amazed how good my son was and stuff. When he was like two or three years old, when he was little like that, I could go into, a, well, I'll tell you, I was, work, I was working at a Taco Bell at the time. When he was little, he was a little older, actually. By this point, he was probably four. Anyway, I used to get my son on the weekends and stuff. After me and my first wife finally divorced and stuff and went our separate ways and all that. I moved and I was living in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee where Dollywood is and everything. So I was staying down there. And I was staying in this little campground in Pigeon Forge. <clears throat> it was awesome. It was just a little bit tiny trailer. That they had, like, one of them a trailer was a camper that was like uh, 10 foot long or something. It was tiny, but it had a shower in it. It was like the tiniest camper you're gonna see would still have a shower, it seemed like. <laughs> and it didn't even work. So. I came to an agreement and everything and was renting this little camper so I could work. It was just straight up the road, a mile and a half, maybe or a mile or something, back towards downtown Pigeon Forge. And Anyway, I'm getting up sidetracked. So anyway, I'm staying in this campground. I go pick up my son for the weekend. 
I had an agreement with my employer and stuff. I needed at least one weekend a month off because I had to go to North Carolina to go get my son. Got my wife or ex-wife moved to North Carolina at the time. And I got them for the weekend. I brought them back. And it was, the my little camper was cool. They had, a, had like a back couch, I guess you'd say, that folded out into a bed. And then there was another board above the bed that you could fold down. So it was like a second bed. Well, I never folded out the couch into a bed. I just laid on it. So it wasn't big enough for both of us, so I pulled down the little top bunk and put my son up there and I would like lay some blankets or something. I did something so he wouldn't roll out the floor during the night or anything. And I had to go to my job to pick up my check. <clears throat> so I had money to take them back home and do stuff or whatever and so we could go do stuff that weekend and everything and pay my rent and you know take care of things I had to go pick up my check so we go up there excuse me we go up there I have them sit at a table near the counter closest to the registers and stuff and I had no toys, no coloring books. I didn't have anything on me and stuff. I just run up here to grab my check, right? So I go up there. All right, Patrick. I need you to just hang out here. Just sit here and be good. Don't make a scene. You know, I'll be back as quick as I can. Let me go get my check and stuff, and then we'll leave. We'll just go get something to eat or do something. And then I go and try to find somebody. I'm like, hey, I need to get my check. And I don't remember why, but it's like taking a minute to get my check for some reason. I was there like 15, 20 minutes at least or something. It's taking a minute to get my check. I look over and I look at my son and he's sitting at the table and I, I just see he's like kind of squirming and getting antsy. You know how kids do when they got to pee. So I go over and I'm like, are you okay, Patrick? You need your bathroom or anything? He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, come on. Let's go. It's all right. Anytime you got to pee, all you had to do is holler at me, wave at me, or something, or whatever. You don't, have to, don't sit here and pee on yourself. Just let me know. So I go, I let him use the bathroom. He come back, I'm like, okay, you good now? And I'm like, let me grab you a drink. So I get him a drink. And then he's hanging out. And. Everybody was so amazed. They were just like, <clears throat> their mind was blown that this little child could just sit there, just relaxing, had like his hand on the table, and just sit there calmly for 5, 10, 20 minutes straight or whatever, just sitting there. And it was perfectly content. He wasn't getting antsy, he wasn't squirming around, he wasn't getting down and running around the store and bothering people or acting stupid and shit. He was just sitting there like an adult, like, hey, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, you need to sit there and chill. I mean, that's the way my son was. He was. I talked to him about everything. I always talked to my son. And the first thing I did when he was little... Up until he was like a year old, like, you know, started sitting up and playing, crawling around, and, you know, started moving around more and being more mobile. I 
kind of clung to them. I always was around them. I was always helping them. I was always holding them. I was always talking to them. And I just showed them love and attention and was constantly. And him being an only child and stuff. <laughs> it's like I was so clingy, I guess, or something. He got to the point where, okay, Dad, leave me alone. I'm fine. <laughs> so my son got to where he was just perfectly content to sit by himself or play by himself and stuff like, okay, leave me alone. Get off of me. <laughs> and that's all I did. That was the whole trick to having a good, well-mannered, polite child was I just showered him with attention. And it was just funny. People were so amazed. Like, oh my God, my son would be running all over this place. They'd be terrorizing people. He's, oh my God, my kid's got ADHD. And oh, uh, blah, blah, blah. No, you damn kid ain't got ADHD. It's like... Yes, there is ADHD and stuff, and some kids got it. Some have to be medicated to calm them down and stuff or whatever. But I would argue only maybe 10% actually have ADHD. It's like, no, they just didn't get showered with love. Like, you gotta understand, once you have a kid, it's not all about you no more. Like, Oh, daddy's got to go to work. Oh, daddy's got to do this, and I got to do that, and I got to, oh, here, just sit in front of the TV and do this, and blah, blah, blah. You know, just constantly pushing your kid off, like, oh, here's your babysitter. I'll stay with your mom. I'll go color and stuff. I'm busy. I got stuff I got to do. Just constantly ignoring your kid and pushing them away. Shower them. Just cling to them. Show them you love them. Give them attention. And bam. Then you got everybody saying, Oh, you got the perfect kid. Oh, your kid is so right. Oh my gosh, it's mind blowing. Your kid just sits there like a little adult. Blah, blah, blah. And I just shake my head. I'm thinking, Oh my God. That was my first kid. I, up until I had my kid, I didn't know nothing about kids. Like, literally nothing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was in for him getting delivered, man. Oh, that was a freaking trip. And it's like, what is going on? I remember a pool of blood the size of my thumb pouring out <laughs> while she's on the table and pushing or whatever, like waiting to deliver. I just remember it's stream of blood the size of my thumb that big just, you know how much fluid that would take to make a string that big around just non-stop and I'm like getting lightheaded and woozy and pale and I'm just like oh, what is going on is that normal <laughs> She gonna bleed out? <laughs> like, it's okay. She hasn't had her period in nine months. So, she's got a lot of blood that needs to come out. It's okay. And I was just like, oh, what is going on? What is this? <laughs> oh, man. And then once he finally does decide to come out, and, hey, here I am, blah, blah, blah. They take him over and they immediately put him in, uh, I don't remember what all that crap's called, but I think a jaundice, he was, he was purple and stuff or something. And they had to, they brushed him over and put him in like a little crib with a light over it. And was giving him light. And 
obviously I haven't seen them yet, you know, because they had the pattern on his back and all that stuff. They're getting them breathing and then getting them in the light and giving them some light and all this is going on. I go over to my wife and I'm like, she's like, how easy and whatever. And I'm like, he looks like E.T. right now. Like, is his head going to stay deformed like that? And is he going to stay purple? What is going on here? He looks like E.T. <laughs> oh, she never let me live that down. <gasps> I can't believe you called her and said her son looked like E.T. She had a lot of problems after my son was born. She went through this depression. Oh my gosh, that postpartum depression is no joke. I've seen it firsthand. So anyway, had a well-mannered E.T. <clears throat> Alright, my video is running long, so it's time to go. Till next time, this is the Willie Dave Later Taters.